I have a friend of mine, uh, he's, you know, I work with, his name, he goes by Adam, he's on Twitter, and he's, uh, I think he's 17 or 18, just graduated high school, and he has made some money, and he's saved every single penny of it, just, you know, for now, he's trying to figure out what he wants to do next with it, but imagine being 17 and making 15K, for example, and over summer. The return of investment you get, if you go into it with the mentality of like, hey, I have nothing to lose, I want to learn and become better at web hacking, if I make money on the side, even better. If you do it because you're passionate about web hacking, not just for the money aspects of it, you're gonna go very far and it's gonna be a lot more enjoyable than, you know, like any other industry, when there's money involved, people wanna do it for overnight quick buck, it's not gonna last that long. I'm on a mission to help people in my community and the people that are watching my YouTube videos or any content that I'm a part of to find their first valid vulnerability, whether it's they're doing a pen test, whether they're doing a CTF, but even better if they're doing a bug bounty or a VDP. So my goal is to just help people this year get their first bounty and get their first valid submission and just, you know, put them on the path of changing their lives. Okay, so this is Brilliant, and I really want to thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video. I really like the way they teach you concepts. They have a whole bunch of interactive courses, including some of my favorites, Programming with Python, an introduction to neural networks. Their content is very interactive and hands-on. Okay, so let's put you to the test and see if you can answer some of these questions which are part of their AI training. I guessed that this was a book, but what did you think it was? Okay, now let's say we add color. What do you think it's now? I just took a wild guess. Car driving on bridge. I had no idea what this actually was. Just took a guess. And that's actually the right answer. This is 1% of this photo. Which part of this photo? I wasn't sure where it was. So I asked Brilliant to show me where this image was. And as you can see, it's a snippet from this image. It's actually that car. So when you look at the image now, your brain may actually see that it's a car. As they say, context matters. Now, when you go through this training, you'll answer the questions yourself. I love that it's interactive, that it's hands-on. People don't learn as well by just reading a book or by watching a video. They learn much more with interactive hands-on training such as the training that Brilliant offers. Now, not only do they offer Brilliant training, they also offer a 30-day trial with a 20% discount if you use my link below, brilliant.org forward slash David Bomble. I really wanna thank Brilliant for sponsoring this video and for the long-term partnership. They are sponsoring my channel, which allows me to create more free content. Check them out using the link below. Everyone, David Bomble back with a very special guest, Ben, welcome. Hi, how's it going? Good, man. It's great to have you back. And I'm really excited about uh, the topic for today's video. You recently posted on your channel, and just for everyone watching, seriously, if you want to learn about Bug Bounty, make sure that you sub to Nahomsek or Ben's channel. Link below, in my opinion, one of the best places to go for Bug Bounty information. And I've seen so many people say the same. So Ben, you got to tell us about this video. I heard, I heard you made like $100,000 or something in like a few weeks, which is insane. Yeah, I don't recommend it. <laughs> it's, I mean, I recommend it because it's good financially, but uh, it was a, it was a really, it wasn't that I planned doing this. It was just more of a, the new year came and you know January 1st came around and I really wanted to start a year and I get, give myself a good head start. And there was a little bit of luck in play with it, but yeah, it was a great opportunity that came about and I uh, helped me make some money and get me back into hacking. And it honestly gave me some good content to make out of it too. Yeah, but that's great. I mean, I, I've heard a lot of people say, well, some, you know, you hear all kinds of things on the internet, but like there's no money in bug bounty anymore. But I mean, you've disproved that. There is, I think the it's like the it's like every industry, right? It's like when people started streaming and everyone's like, there's no money in streaming. There is, if there's money in every industry you go to. It's just more of a, how do you stand out? What do you bring that's new? Or how do you, how do you, compete with other people to do better or to make it work. So there is money to be made in bug bounties like any other industry. I think there's actually more money to be made in bug bounties nowadays because of how many bug bounty programs are out there. But yeah, I mean, that's a good uh, way to prove it. And I even talked about it. A lot of these programs that I hacked on, there were two main programs that I even showed in the video. One has been around um, for quite a few years, like three, four years. And the other one has also been around for like one or two years. And some of these top hackers in the world have already hacked on him. So it just shows that it, it wasn't that I got my hands on this like brand new program or this brand new company that I made money on. It was just more of a, I found a really good spot in this company that I want to hack into. I changed the style of my hacking and I ended up, it ended up working out. And to be honest, I took my own, I ended up taking my own advice of the, that I give people on these videos. And I'm like, I'm giving these people advice and is it, does it actually work? And I started taking my own advice and I'm like, okay, now I don't feel as bad about the advice that I'm giving on my channel. Well, that's great. So, I mean, that's what I want to try and get from you in today's video for everyone who's watching. Let's say I'm interested in Bug Bounty. I'm new to this. Or you're talking to your younger self. You know, you've been down this journey. I like to, I like to find people with lots of experience who can share with all of us how to do it. So, 
Let's start with like top three tips perhaps that you, you would give someone starting out or yourself, you know, a few years ago. This is the, the top three non-technical tips. Uh, first of all, it's just like, you know, I think you as a YouTube content creator, you can relate to this. It doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of patience. It's just like anything you do in life. It takes a lot of patience. The second one is also very generic, but consistency is absolutely key in anything you do, including hacking, including bug bounties, because you have to consistently learn. You have to be consistent with how much time you put into hacking. And I'm not saying overdo it. I'm not saying, you know, go out there and like, you know, put yourself in a position that you're going to be exhausted, but it's just consistently wanting to put in the work is another one. And then last, the third thing that I want to say is I think it's also just not comparing yourself and, yeah. but finding someone that could push you. It's a kind of like the opposite of each other. But the biggest one is like finding someone that could either keep you as an accountability buddy or finding someone that knows as much as you do, maybe a little bit more than you do and kind of like working with each other and learning from each other and hacking is that's one of the biggest things and best thing that's happened to me is having someone, uh, Brett Brewer house, aka Zayat, he's one of my good friends. We started hacking together and he knew a little bit more about some stuff that I didn't know. And we ended up just working with each other and learning and actually making this bug bounty thing work. So join a community, find a friend and hang out with them and hack with them. It's like everything in life, right? Teamwork. You, you can't yep. know everything yourself. You can't be the best at everything. You're so much more powerful as a team. Yeah, so those are the non-technical you know, yep. tips. But on the technical side, it's just uh, what you should learn. There's a lot that goes into bug bounties. And I would also say it's not just bug bounties. It's just web app hacking and pen testing. Is You want to learn the basics. You want to learn uh, how things work. So what happens? Like the first one is what happens when you type in www.nahomsec.com, for example, into the browser? What happens to the background? Can you explain that to anybody? What, is on the, what happens on the DNS side? What happens on the browser side? What happens on the server side? and kind of understanding how everything works in the back end. So that's like networking, DNS, and then kind of like web servers and how they work. So that's the number one thing. If you can't figure those out and you can't learn those things, you may be able to get around, but you're not going to go far. The second thing is understanding the vulnerabilities at its core, not just paying payloads, but also knowing why the payloads work and what makes these vulnerabilities work on the server side or on the application side. So not just going, oh, I plug this exploit in or this payload in, this is what happens. Why? What happens there? So not so much of the how, but more on the why it works. And a third one that I would say is uh, also important for just web hacking, bug bounties, and or just being becoming a red teamer even is having the hacker mentality. And I think I personally think that a lot of people have done some sort of hacking in their life, including you, including people that are not even technical or content creators, whatever you want to say, they've done some sort of a hacking. It's by just finding loopholes in life. It's you go and find these different things that you go, I want to do this, or this thing doesn't do this. I want to do this thing. How do I do that? Whether it's cheating in a game, whether it's finding a loophole to get something for free, whatever that is, right? That's also with hacking. What does this application do? What does it not do? What do I do exactly to make that happen? So it's just a hacker mindset and hacker mentality of having that as well. Ben, the biggest problem is like, is there a way to hack learning this stuff or, you know, how do I get skills? How do, have you got any tips for that? So a lot of people that might, might have already heard this term, but we, we, we talk about this. If you go on Twitter, you look at it, everyone says like, don't learn to hack, hack to learn. And it's also, it, it's, you know, it, it makes sense, right? You, you yeah. hack things to learn them, but let's just take a step back. Forget about hacking. Let's say, uh, I think a lot of people that probably watch our content on YouTube are, uh, they're, they're gamers, I'm so sorry, right? They play video games. I'm going to use a game like Call of Duty or maybe Apex or something like that, right? It's, like, it's a first-person shooter game. When you buy that game, even though you have, you know, you may be new or you have played the previous versions, the first thing you want to do is you want to learn how the maps work. The maps could be your programs, your software that you're hacking. Then you want to learn how the guns work, what the attachments are. Those are your tools, right? So you have all these different things that come into it, but you can't learn them unless you do it. So you can, you know, one of the things that I tell people is you can sit here and consume content 24-7. You can watch yeah. my videos, you can watch your videos, John Hammond's, whoever you want to call it. You can watch all these videos, all these pros, but until you put in the work, you're not going to be able to hack things. So the biggest thing is to actually jump jump in and stop letting that voice in your head, your whatever you want to call it, you know, that, that thing that wants to stop you, your, your doubts, your self-doubts, whatever it is, set some time aside and actually put in the work and learn these concepts that you have watched or you have read or you're, you know, you watch video and on or whatever it is and actually start doing them on your own. Yeah. I mean, the, the analogy I always like to use and it applies to anything is um, you can read about riding a bicycle, you can watch videos, 
whatever. But until you've done it and you've fallen off a few times, you'll never actually know how to do it. So just do it. Yeah, absolutely. It's the same thing. It's anything in life you do, right? It's whether you want to get something technical or you want to just do anything. It's just you have to practice. And the gaming analogy is something that I know a lot of my viewers kind of relate to because they all play video games and it's anything in life. You want to do these things and the more you do it, the more you practice, you become better. So practice makes it perfect. And also, you know, it's just a consistency thing that I said earlier in the video. Yeah, a book that I love is Atomic Habits. It's that yep. um, thing where you, yeah, you've read it, right? Where you do yeah, 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 1% increase, a consistent 1% increase will put you in a different league to someone who who does a whole bunch a little bit and then forgets or for a little while and then forgets about it and comes back and so forth. It's like anything in life, yeah, because that consistency that you've, that you've um, said is so important. Yeah, you want to build that muscle of like, yeah. hey, I, I, I want to hack. And the more and more you do that, that muscle becomes stronger so you know where to look for vulnerabilities. You know, when you play video games, when people camp corners, you know where those are, right? You just you know where we're going to be hiding and popping out. It's the same thing with hacking. You just have to put in the effort and put in the time. And honestly, uh, a lot of people that, you know, I, I, I they ask me these things. I know if you're in your late 20s, early 30s, maybe in your 40s, it's harder because you have respons- more responsibilities. You have kids, yeah. you have family, you have a job, right? But a lot of people that I also talk to me or watch my content, they're in their way early 20s or even their teenagers. You have a lot of time. A lot most people yeah. that teenagers are not really working. You know, if you're working, shout out to you, good for you. But if you're not working, you don't have as many responsibilities. All you have to do is invest your time. And I promise you it's worth it at the end of it. And even if it's not just for bug bounty hunting and you learn how to hack websites and you get good at it, there is a lot of job opportunities that come out of it, especially if you're young, if you're a teenager or your early 20s. That's brilliant. I mean, let's get a bit more technical. So where do I go? Do you have like top three bug bounty platforms? Uh, and like on the bug bounty platforms, I might be competing against someone like you. I mean, I don't stand a chance. Is there any like, sort of specific part of that or program or something? within that bug bounty program that you'd recommend? So let's let's do on the learning side of things. There are three learning platforms or resources that I recommend and these are 100% free. I'm not endorsed by them. This is not an ad. It's just, I think these are really the things that yeah. work. The first your one opinion. is called- Just give us your opinion. Sorry, go on. Yeah. The, the first one is Pico CTF. Uh, I think people okay. uh, have probably heard of this one is not only they teach you how to hack things, but some of their web challenges, for example, are exactly what I said. What happens when you type in the address bar, the website, it makes you understand those things in a form of a challenge or a puzzle. So it's Pico CTF to start is a really good place. And the second one, what you want to do is you want to go to the WebSec Academy by Portswigger. That is a very, very good resource if you want to learn the basics of vulnerabilities to give you uh, a written content. And I think they have some videos too now, but you read it and at the bottom there is a lab. You click on the lab and you practice that exact thing. But these CTFs uh, with the Portswigger Academy, it's very much so like a point and exploit. This is the bug you have to exploit. Here is a lab. So you do that, but it's really good to learn, but it's it it goes to it actually translates into the actual bug bounty world, but you want to get a little bit better and just be able to find these vulnerabilities without knowing they exist. So that's where Hacker One One is a good one to go to, which is owned by Hacker One, which is one of the bug bounty platforms in the world. Uh, and what they do with Hacker One Hundred One is, if you go on there and you solve a CTF, they give you about six to seven points per flag. And if you find three or four flags, what happens is they actually put you in the invite algorithm. So you get invited to a bug bounty program that's private on their platform and you're inside their algorithm. So you kind of bypass a little bit of the logistics by showing them that you know how to hack. So yes, the third one is the key. If you do them in that order specifically, it's very, very good and actually gets you out there. So those are the top three like learning platforms where you can learn hands-on for free and actually make a little bit of money if you get invited to a bug bounty program on Hacker One. And if I want to do it like like you do to make money, like actually hack companies, is it Hacker One? What, what do you recommend? Top three? Yeah, there are a couple of bug bounty platforms out there. There's a lot of new bug bounty platforms that are coming out. I uh, recommend people to, so one of the advice that I give to a lot of the the mentees and the people that I talk to is pick two of these bug bounty platforms or even three. Uh, the top three for me personally is uh, Hacker One is the the first one that I, is my primary, what I call it. Bug Crowd is my secondary, and that's what I tell people: Hey, take your primary and take a secondary, and then your third and fourth if you have extra time. So the primary for me is Hacker One, and the second one is Bug Crowd, and then there is Integrity and Synac. Those two are kind of equal to me. Synac is a little bit harder to get into. You have to pass an exam, do an interview. It's a private red team they do, but it's kind of like kind of like a bug bounty meets red 
red team. But those four other ones I would go to. But honestly, it doesn't matter if you think you like Buck Crowd more than Hacker One, do it. Yeah. If you're in Europe and watching this, Integrity may be a better choice for you because they have a lot of European programs. They better work better with the tax laws in Europe and they just have programs that are very much niche to Europe. But honestly, it doesn't matter. Pick one, make it your primary because when you have that primary, the more you hack on them, the more they're going to take care of you. You become a loyal hacker on there and they're loyal to you. They invite you to more things. You get more perks. So you want to build that and then build your second there just in case you're out of work with the other one. And then I think you've said it on previous interviews. If you're starting out, try and go for the the uh, the non-paid po- programs. Is that right? Or Because the problem is if you go against like big companies like PayPal or whatever that that you've hacked in the past that you may be competing against people who are far ahead of you, that kind of thing. Is that right? Yeah. So what I would recommend is uh, go hack on these phone disclosure programs or phone liability disclosure programs or VDP for short. The way these work is it's a see something, say something. So if you find a vulnerability, you report to them and they just say thank you to you. There's no money involved in that. But what is really cool about doing these VDPs and on the streams that I do, I you know I hack on these VDPs for people to see it. There are so many vulnerabilities that have not been found in some of these. You know, just yesterday I did a live stream on uh, Latin Airlines. It's like a, a South American Airlines. And we could just see there's so many potential vulnerabilities and people in my stream were like, is it really that easy? Not that I'm making it easy, but it's just more of a the pros, quote unquote, that people that are doing this for money aren't going to be looking at these programs. So there are more vulnerabilities there. What that does for you is two things. One, it allows you to find vulnerabilities and you you kind of like have a track record with these bug bounty programs or platforms. So you're creating your uh, your profile on these platforms. But two, it's also allowing you to create your own methodology. How do I look for these vulnerabilities? How do I do recon? How do I do X? How do I do Y? So it gives you that capability and it's a, it's a win-win. So you also get to learn more and uh, not you don't get paid, but it gives you a really good way to uh, learn these different vulnerabilities. And eventually, if you know your stuff, if you're confident, then you can go to these public bug bounty programs and get paid. The the biggest advice for anyone that's watching this, if you want to get into bug bounties, the biggest thing that I've realized is it takes one program to crush. So if you go and do VDPs and HackerOne or BugCrowd invites you to their, one of these bug bounty programs, the private ones, it takes one program for you to crush it and make four, five, six thousand dollars $6,000 to A, build momentum and catch the pl- bug bounty platform's attention to invite you to more things. So you just want to find that program that works for you and then just crush it absolutely as much as you can. Something you've said in the past as well is this opened up doors for you in companies. So it's a great way to show experience when you don't have experience, right? Yeah, absolutely. And the other thing is uh, people that are doing bug bounties, they, they do it for different reasons, right? It could be that you want to you know, put something on your resume because you just want to learn or you just want to make money from it, right? But if your goal is to score a job or do something, I'm a prime example of it. Before I did any bug bounties, I had zero tech, zero cybersecurity content on my resume, right? And then I was just hacking on anything I could, whether it was Yahoo, whether it was like a random company I've never heard of. I found vulnerabilities and I put them on my resume. That's how I got my first job in tech. All I put was 10 cross-site scripting or over 20 cross-site scripting vulnerabilities found. And then in parentheses, it would say confirmed by X, Y, and Z companies. And that alone just gave me the, the credentials that I needed to get a job. So if your goal is to get a job, there is that. If your goal is to understand web apps more, you have that opportunity. It's just, it's just really a, it just varies on your goal and what your end goal is with what you're doing. I love it because I mean, it's real world experience. I mean, if I, if you're 16 or 18 or whatever, or you're going from coming from another industry, there's, I mean, how else, there's like no better way than like, okay, you did, it's, you, you actually hacked a company. I mean, what a, yeah. what a great thing to put in your resume. Absolutely. I have a, I have a friend of mine, uh, he's, you know, I work with his name. He goes by Adam. He's on Twitter and he's, uh, I think he's 17 or 18, just graduated high school and he has made some money and he saved every single penny of it. Just, you know, for now he's trying to figure out what he wants to do next with it. But imagine being 17 and making 15K, for example, and over summer. That pays for your, probably your college or pays for your car or pays for your summer vacation, whatever it is, right? But imagine 15K at a, at the age of 17. I don't know that's how much, I'm not saying that's how much he made, but even if you make the 15K in a, over summer, that's more than any 17 year old would make in a year of working a regular job, right? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you're doing what you enjoy as well, rather than working in say McDonald's or some other place perhaps that you don't enjoy. Yeah, the cool thing with bug bounties is uh, you need three things. One of them is optional, which is the coffee or tea that you drink. It's optional. And the other two is your laptop and a Wi-Fi connection. Nothing else matters. 
That's so true. I mean, the, the, the barriers to entry are so low. Yeah, absolutely. And I know people that hack on their Android phones, on their iPads, wow. honestly, to start. I know someone who bought their first laptop by hacking on their iPad or an Android device of some sort, and then they made like 1500 bucks and they bought a laptop for themselves. The return of investment you get, if you go into it with the mentality of like, hey, I have nothing to lose. I want to learn and become better at web hacking. If I make money on the side, even better. If you do it because you're passionate about web hacking, not just for the money aspects of it, you're going to go very far and it's going to be a lot more enjoyable than, you know, like any other industry when there's money involved, people want to do it for overnight quick buck. It's not going to last that long. That's great advice. Now, I obviously recommend your channel, but do you have any like top three YouTube channels and perhaps top three books that you could recommend? Let's start with the YouTube channel. Uh, the top three YouTube channels that I would recommend, there's so many of them, so if I forget yours, I'm sorry. There is uh, Katie, aka Insider PhD. She's been doing some really cool content for beginners. Uh, she's She used to be a mentee at one of the programs we did when I worked at Hacko One, and she's now crushing it herself. Uh, there's Farah Hawa. She's uh, a content creator. She used to work at Bug Crowd. Now she's employed by Facebook's or Meta's security team and she does some really cool stuff uh there's also stoke he doesn't make as much content anymore he's taking a break but he also has a great channel for it uh there is a uh, bug bounty phd very good channel very brand new he also focuses a lot on bug bounties and that kind of aspect but on hacking there are so many other people there's john hammond there's jacoby there is hacker Sploy. there's so many of them but so many yeah them. if you are uh, yeah there's so many but the bug bounty side the three and the three or four that i mentioned are probably one of the best ones you can find find out there and if i forgot your channel i'm so sorry there's so many new content creators out there nowadays and there's also the, another one that i forgot about is a uh, bug bounty explained greg he takes vulnerabilities that have been disclosed and then he talks about why they were working how they works so also a really good one if you want to learn more on the technical side so for everyone who's watching we've obviously forgotten a whole bunch of amazing people or we'll not mention them here please put in the comments below people that you really like show, share the love and sh you know show your love to all the content creators out there that are you know creating amazing content so please put your comments below ben books top three books or you know it doesn't have to be three but any books that you can recommend that i buy to get started i mean you can see kind of like behind me right there at the top there <laughs> <laughs> They're just peeking out. Uh, the hacking API is a really good one. If you want to learn how to hack APIs, APIs run the backend of most uh, modern websites. There is the Bug Bounty Bootcamp by Vicky Lee. Absolutely amazing book that I recommend. There's also the Web Hackers, uh, the Hacker's Handbook. The Web, Web Application Hacker's Handbook. Uh, it's kind of old and it's really thick about like, this big, but I recommend it because it covers a lot of the basics, but also shows you how to use the the, the, the tools that you need to get better at, like Burp Suite. So I recommend that also as a top three. There are a lot of good books. Uh, no Starch makes some really good books. So just look up No Starch and see some other hacking books. But those are the top three that I would recommend on the bug bounty aspects. Ben, top three technologies. I mean, you mentioned like web technologies, right? Are there any specific like technologies that I have to understand? There isn't a specific one that I would recommend. I would, I would I would break it down in three different categories. One is you want to learn how to script. How do you automate some of your work? How do you make your life easier? How do you become more efficient? People love doing uh, batch scripting, which I recommend. I think it's probably one of the better ones you could do or Python even better if you want to go down that route. Uh, learning Python would be very helpful because you just know how things work better. So yeah. that's just one of those for scripting purposes. Two is understanding some web programming would be really good, like how to build a website. Uh, I would just say go and create a WordPress website on your own, not not just set up a blog we're using wordpress.com but actually how do you install wordpress how do you install apache how do you install mysql and all that so you learn how to do like basics of linux and then you know it goes back to the first thing i ever said learn how everything works and then the last thing i would recommend is uh picking up javascript but not in the sense of like you need to become a full stack developer but understanding how does a request how does a request get created using javascript how do variables work you know how does you know when you look at this code you can just look at the endpoint that's in this javascript file and going it's requiring these different categories of parameters or this type of connection or this method or whatever it is and being able to kind of follow the code and understanding it so those are the three things that i would say it's good on the the programming or technology side of things to learn okay i want to talk about your channel because i've, I've seen an, an amazing change in your channel um we I, that's why i sort of wanted to set up this interview because you've like really taken it to another level so i something that i really loved is what you said in one of your video one of your videos where you're saying you're trying to help people so what's the goal with your channel these days and you know what what are you sharing there so the the so it's very cool that you asked me this. I just recently realized what my why was with my YouTube channel. Oh, brilliant. Uh, brilliant. 
Yeah, it's uh, I wanna. There's two things. One is I've drastically changed my life. I went from a not sure what I wanted to do, a confused college kid, to you know getting a career out of bug bounties. So I want to help the same thing. I think people can change their lives with hacking, whether it's bug bounties, whether it's pen testing, you know, getting a job in you know cybersecurity. But the other one is I'm on a mission to help people in my community and the people that are watching my YouTube videos or any content that I'm a part of to find their first valid vulnerability, whether it's they're doing a pen test, whether they're doing a CTF. But even better if they're doing a bug bounty or a VDP. So my goal is to just help people this year get their first bounty and get their first valid submission and just you know put them on the path of changing their lives. That's such a cool mission. I love that. You know, the why is so important. So tell me, where can people find you? So obviously YouTube, are you on like Twitch? Where's, where's good places? So I stream very regularly on Twitch, Sunday, Monday, Tuesdays. Sundays being my most consistent and most popular because I interview and hack things live on Twitch. And then I'm on YouTube for my weekly content. I post a video every Monday. And then you can find me on Twitter if you want to just, you know, hear me complain about how I suck at hacking sometimes. I hate hacking. And then Instagram is on the personal side of like, there's this things that I deal with that I struggle with and then micro content that I post. So those are the, the four social medias that I'm on. Uh, but if you want everyone that wants to learn about hacking i think youtube and twitch would be your best bets yeah i mean i was i was going to just to, to reiterate one of the reasons that i wanted to set up this interview is because i see you on what you're doing on um, instagram i see what you're doing on on twitter obviously youtube it's fantastic so everyone who's watching please go and show the love Ben's trying to get 100,000 subscribers. That might have already been reached by the time you watch this video. But if if he hasn't, please get him to the 100K sub mark. I found that once I hit 100,000 subs, things changed a lot. And I really want to get him to, you know, a million as soon as we can. But let's get to that 100K. He made $100,000 hacking. We want to get him to 100,000 on YouTube. So let's hack that algorithm legally, of course. Go and sub. Ben, thanks so much for sharing and that fantastic mission. I love it. Thank you. And who knows, maybe if I hit 100K, I do something crazy with my hair or do something fun <laughs> to make people happy as a challenge. But yeah, thanks again for having me. And also, if you're watching this, and if you're not, you know, subscribe to David's channel, you should also hit that like and subscribe on his channel as well. Appreciate it, man. Thanks, Ben.